Okay. Right, so I'll get started. So hi, I'm Amber from Influencer Updates on Instagram. And tonight I'm going to give you three Australian influencer updates for the week. And then I will do a Q&A where you can ask the questions. So if you wanna put them in the comment box down the bottom now, I will answer them at the end of the updates. So the first one I wanna talk about is M Davies. She has done two interviews this week on podcasts. She was on Lily Brown's Red Hot Pod. And the biggest takeaway from that interview, oh, there's quite a lot of things that I've written here on like subscribers. I've written all of like the noteworthy things that she said, but the biggest one she said that I found interesting is that she said that she's not going to let her baby change her love of travel and that Lily and M Davies have planned that they're going to take her baby to Paris together and drink hot chocolates under the Eiffel Tower. And I mean, that is so great. But being that I have two children and like a lot of the commentary that I received when I posted this is that everybody thinks that that is going to be their life when they have children. We're all like, oh, our baby's not going to change our travel. We're just going to like make it work. And unfortunately, that is not the reality for most of us. I mean, there's a lot of people that if they want to make it happen, they definitely will happen and they definitely will make it happen. And maybe she will be one of those people. But it's just funny that we all have this idea going into motherhood and it often changes once you have a baby. <laughs> um, she also, M Davies also did, didn't, oh, sorry, I'm tripping on my words. M Davies also did an interview on Happy Hour podcast with Lucy Jackson and Nikki Westcott. And she did speak about wedge shred again. So she's spoken about that on a TikTok before where she's saying that she wants to like bounce back as fast as possible. She is getting married seven months after she has her baby. And yeah, it's just quite jarring to hear that term wedge shred and bounce back. But I mean, it's probably the reality for a lot of people, especially those in the public eye. So maybe it's a good thing she's talking about it. I don't know. I think it puts a lot of pressure on both herself as well as expectant mothers, as well as new mothers. So yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily a good thing. She's saying that it's a fitness goal. And I think that she's sort of just using that as like a healthy disguise because realistically she has a wedding dress that she's bought and she needs to fit into it. And we all know that it's really a weight loss goal. She did say that a name that she won't be using is Frankie Sue. So that is a girl's name, Frankie Sue. But um, regardless, the baby's name will have Sue as a middle name because that is her mum's name. So I thought that was really nice. And she was also saying, this was the interesting part. She was saying that she doesn't think she will get postpartum anxiety because her fiance, Joel, is going to be a very hands-on dad. And when I was listening to the podcast, I was very shocked that she said that because I know I haven't experienced postpartum anxiety, but I know that it's not caused by whether or not your husband is hands-on. I also hate the term hands-on. <laughs> um, but anyway, I digress. Um, Luckily, Lucy redeemed the podcast, like that, this segment of the podcast. And Lucy mentioned that postpartum anxiety is often hormonal and not a result of how hands-on the father is. So yes, that was interesting in that episode. <laughs> the next update I've got for this week is Sam Guggenheimer. Sorry, my iPad is not working and it's really throwing me. I need to like look at the pictures. That's yeah. Okay. So there's been rumors going around on TikTok that Sam Guggenheimer, sorry, I need the names of people. Sorry. This is the worst live I've ever done. Here we go. There's been rumors going around TikTok that Sam Guggenheimer has cheated with Ned. Oh, what is Ned's name? I haven't got his surname here. Hang on. It's in the other picture. Ned Lester. Okay, so there's an influencer called Cairo Calvito, and she had a boyfriend called Ned Lester. And they recently split, and the rumor is that they split because he cheated on Cairo with Sam Guggenheimer. So then footage came out from Bar Bambi of Sam and Ned dancing together, like looking friendly, I suppose. They weren't like kissing or anything. But um, that seemed like people seemed to take that as, okay, well, these rumors must be true. They must have cheated together and like Cairo and Sam have unfollowed each other. However, 
If you match up her outfit that she's wearing in the video, if you look back at her Instagram photos, you can see the date that she wore that outfit. So that must've been the night she was at Bar Bambi and it was actually after Cairo and Ned broke up. So yeah, I believe that, you know, that would have all been talked about privately and hopefully Cairo and Sam are on good terms now, but I don't believe that Ned did cheat. Well, if, if he did cheat, I don't believe it was with Sam Guggenheimer. I think that she just gets dragged into so much stuff lately and yeah, people just love the drama. She's a very talked about influencer, but she did respond to the drama. She posted on her stories, or actually maybe, no, it was on Snapchat. She posted on Snapchat, just a photo of herself going like this, saying, put your life online, they say, dot, dot, dot. And I believe that that was her referring to like all these rumors that are going around. And she's just like, oh, honestly, this is just too much. They say, put your life online and this is what happens. Like everybody just makes up all these rumors. I think that was what she was saying as her response. So yeah, that's a bit stressful for her, no doubt. But um, yeah, that's been very hot topic this week. Then the third update, sorry, my silly iPad. The third update is Starlet Thin, I believe you pronounce her name. So she is the younger sister of Tammy Hembro. She posted a seven and a half, maybe eight minute TikTok video this week saying, talking about that she won't be posting her body on the internet anymore and that she can't believe she used to. So she used to post like lots of bikini shots and lingerie shots. She says that she's now reflected that those photos can end up anywhere. And she doesn't blame the people that continue to do it now because the role models we have in society are desensitizing us to nudity. She also no longer finds fulfillment in the social media world. And her main takeaway from her eight minute speech, she said at the end, my main takeaway is that God created you perfectly. So Starlet is religious and talks about her religion quite a lot. And she's saying that God helped her realize that she doesn't need to use her body and like show her body online unnecessarily. And even like when she's at the beach, she doesn't need to be wearing like a G string bikini just because other girls are. And yeah, that's basically the summary of it. And it was just really interesting being that her sister, Tammy Hembro is known for that. Like Tammy Hembro has made her millions and millions of dollars off showing off her body. And Starlet, yeah, she did get into influencing at one point and was making money off showing her body. Like a lot of the posts she did would have been sponsored. And yeah, it's, it's interesting that Starlet's woken up to, I guess, that world and she doesn't want to be a part of it anymore, even though her sister is very much a part of it and has a very big influence on the body industry, like the weight, not, like weight loss industry, the fitness industry how people look in photos, the sort of content people are wanting to copy and emulate. So yeah, that was really interesting. Now I'm gonna go through the questions. So now that I've put my iPad down, I just feel so much more relieved. That was a really bad idea. I've never done that before. I don't think I'll do it again. I think I just need to talk. <laughs> Any news on Sam, Rayner and Wires only? Yes, so I mean, they have broken up by the look of it. She's moved back to Australia. She's no longer wearing her engagement ring. And somebody messaged me just before this live saying that Wise Only has now listed Sam's Rolls Royce car for sale. He lives in America. So he is also like a multi-millionaire car dealer to the celebrities. But yes, it seems they have definitely broken up. Someone else has been watching the Errors to a movie. It's so good. It's just the best. I think it's actually better better than the concert in many ways. Like you can really see up close and you don't miss anything and you really see like the concept of each song that she's doing. Obviously being at the concert is amazing and you've got like the atmosphere and everything, but in terms of like viewing the concert and the story, I think the movie's so good. People here are saying that traveling with babies is easy and it is definitely different when they are toddlers. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I've never really had the chance to travel with a baby because of COVID lockdowns, but yes, I can definitely see that that would be easier. Just reading more people are responding about M Davies opinion of wanting to travel lots when she has a baby. Yeah. Lots of people saying babies are easier. Oh, am I wearing this because of the footy tonight? No, 
That is actually so funny. It looks like Geelong Cats colours and I live in Geelong. So quite ironic. It's just um, like a t-shirt dress from Country Road and I wear it on Fridays. Well, I wore it today. It's actually the first time I've worn it because I had swimming and it's just easy to chuck over my bathers. No, I'm not still wearing my bathers. <laughs> Oh, Collingwood. People thought it was Collingwood. My husband is watching it, but no, <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, a lot of people were agree like when I posted the style it thin thing about like showing your body, most of the people on subscribers, they agreed with it and said like, she's got such a good point. And I agree. She does have a really good point. I hadn't thought of it like that. And it's true. But um, it seems like a few people on the comments here are saying you know, like rolling their eyes, saying it's silly what she's saying. Any news for Tammy and Matt's wedding? I don't believe there is yet. I can't think of any news. That's really a shame because I really want to know. I really want to know more about their wedding. <laughs> any updates on Sarah's day? Uh, she posted one today. She was saying that she hasn't been posting much content this week because she's just been busy living her life, I suppose, and hasn't allowed herself time to create content. But she was saying that she films everything she does. So she said that she's got content for the week. She just hasn't allowed herself the time to turn it into content, like create it into like an Instagram reel or whatever. And I just thought that was so interesting to think that she films everything she does. And you can tell because like in her vlog, she is filming just the mundane things that people do. But it's interesting when she puts it all together in a vlog, like you've got to have some relaxing bits. But yeah, I thought that was quite interesting. Thoughts on the feedback Laura Henshaw gets on her disposition and the way she comes across on the podcast, especially in comparison to Steph. In the podcast reviews, people say Laura is annoying. Oh, I didn't know people said that, but um, I think I really like their podcast, the Kick Podcast, Kick Pod, I think it's called. And I think that Laura is quite endearing on the podcast. Like I think that on her Instagram, she sort of comes across as a bit like she's preaching to everybody kind of thing and just like virtue signaling. She's probably not virtue signaling, but it's just the way it comes across like she's caring so much about everyone but then sort of trying to teach us all lessons and I get this sort of funny vibe I don't know how to explain it but I get a weird vibe from her Instagram but then when I listen to her on the podcast she just seems like so funny and like just relaxed and fun and just laughs about things and I actually really like her personality on the podcast whereas Steph comes across a lot more serious on the podcast but yeah um, I haven't got feedback about her being annoying on the podcast. That's an interesting one. Any idea on the mega influencer going into the jungle? The video today is blonde hair. Reminds me of Ashy Bynes, but I don't think she would go in. Huh. There has been a few rumors about who's going in because the I'm a Celebrity AU page followed a whole bunch of people that have never been in the jungle so it seems like they must be the new celebrities going in because they also followed like Rob Irwin. Those people were Olivia Fraser from Maths, like a few seasons ago. I think, did I talk about this already in a life? Um, Buddy Franklin was another one that they followed, but I don't know of a mega influencer. It's probably one of those fake mega influencers, honestly. Like um, Susan, maybe it's that Susan. Susan Mutesi, maybe it's her because she has got a lot of followers and I mean there's been a lot of rumors going around that they're fake but oh blonde hair okay it wouldn't be her unless she might have blonde hair at the moment I reckon it could be Susan Mutesi that would be very interesting what else have we got did I see the wedding of the outspoken podcaster Amy Huh. I thought it was Sophie that got married on the weekend. Okay, that's really confusing me, but um, they are triplets, so I guess that is that does happen. I do get confused by them sometimes. Um, yeah, it looked 
really nice. Like it looked like a really fun wedding. And I did hear their subscription podcast where they spoke about, you know, how it was 40 degrees and they spoke about um, how the, the bridesmaid dresses, a lot of people are thinking that they're the same as her sister's bridesmaid dresses who got married before her. And yeah, there was a lot of good behind behind the scenes information. They spoke about like how their parents both gave them money towards the wedding, but then they spelt, they spent some of their own as well. And yeah, that's about all I have to say about that one. She obviously looks stunning. They all look stunning. They always do, even when they're wearing a hoodie. <laughs> oh yeah, someone else asked me this. Is Rachel Dillon and Isabel Mathers still friends? Rachel was not at Isabella's birthday. Isabel's birthday. Yeah, I assume they're still friends. Like they've been friends for such a long time and done like collaborations together for Crop Shop Boutique. But I'm thinking maybe Rachel wasn't at the party because the party was in Sydney, I believe. Like it wasn't on the Gold Coast. So maybe Rachel wasn't able to travel for some reason. That's the only thing I can think of because, yeah, I can't imagine they would have had a friendship breakdown, but it's possible. Are you sitting on any juicy goss that you'd love to post but feel you shouldn't as you don't have proper proof? Oh, I can't think off the top of my head, but I mean, there's a lot of stuff I don't post because I don't have proof. Like, I can't just be posting stuff that's going to get people in trouble. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd, I'd have to think about that one. Sorry, I might. I've, I did like a subscriber Q&A today, so I'll have a think about it and I might answer it in there. Chloe Zepp on Mitch's story. Is it new or old? It is new. So Chloe Zepp and Mitch Orville were spotted in stories together this week. So it was Mitch's brother, Dylan, his son's third birthday. And there was like a family party at the beach and both Mitch and Chloe were there. And yeah, people are happy about that because they're thinking maybe they haven't broken up after all. Is it too early to assume Sarah's day could be pregnant? It's not too early to assume, but she has told us many, many times that she is trying to get pregnant and she will tell us as soon as she is. So I don't think she is. Rob Irwin is super nice. I met him at Melbourne Fashion Festival. That's really cool. And that Julia Morris is a weird combination with Rob Irwin. I'm very much looking forward to seeing the combination. I think that Julia Morris is so so random and a lot of people don't like the i'm a celebrity show because of her hosting personality so yeah it'll be interesting to see if she has the same personality even though chris brown is no longer host Sorry, I'm just looking for like relevant, like new sort of questions. A lot of people ask questions like about old stuff and I'm trying to keep it to the new stuff. Isabel is a bridesmaid in Rachel's wedding. Yeah, that's true. So I imagine they are still friends. Somebody mentioned that it was on Rachel's mum's birthday, the party. So maybe that's why she didn't go. Oh gosh, sorry. People are asking again about like the Ashy, Greddy, Sammy trio breakdown. They never said what it was. Like Ashy did a podcast one time saying that they just grew apart, but I don't think it was that. It definitely seemed like it was more than that. And then when Ashy's brand Hideaway brought out lip balms, that's when Sammy was just like, nah, I'm going to admit to everybody that we're no longer friends anymore. So. That's when everything hit the fan. Also, Greddy and Sammy, they said a while ago now they're coming out with a podcast together, but I haven't heard anything of it since. Do you know anything about Sofa Dofa's boyfriend? Yes, I do. So I posted in subscribers, which used to be called Close Friends, back probably July last year. Um, she's been with him since then, and like I posted pictures back then. And yeah, I've posted them again since, but um, we've only got, I've only got that one photo of them together. And I've heard from people that he's really lovely and like their family is really like each other and everything just seems so cute and nice. And yeah, I think that's really good for her. 
Where in Thailand is Indy Clinton going? I don't know, but I saw she was in Singapore today. So is she going to Thailand as well? I'm not sure about that. She did launch a podcast this week. I suppose I can't not mention that because that's pretty big news. And I haven't listened to the episode yet, but um, yeah, I am interested to see what she does. Like if it's going to be as chaotic as her TikTok channel. I don't think it will be because I don't think that would translate very well to a podcast. People don't want to listen to a chaotic podcast. To know. I'll have to listen and see. Any gossip about Kayla at Cenas? Uh, not gossip. I, I, it just depends how you use the word gossip, I suppose. But um, her husband, Jay, he purchased a new car this week and I've looked up the price. It's some fancy Porsche and I've spoken to a few people who are into cars and it is said to be worth about $700,000. So that is pretty crazy. And then Kayla wrote in the comments something like, so happy you got this, like love this for you or something, which is interesting because I think that Kayla is extremely wealthy and I don't know how Jay, I mean, I'm guessing they share money, but I don't know how Jay would be purchasing a $700,000 car without her money because that is crazy money. It was just weird, like the way she worded it. Oh, any idea why Sharon, Hannah, and the rest of the Orville family don't seem to be around Artie and Sunny much? I feel like they are around them a fair bit. Um, Sharon posted photos this week with them. But yeah, I'm not sure what that would be about. Maybe it would just be something to do with Mitch and Chloe not wanting them to, potentially. Lots of people asking about Andre Rebello. So Gracie Pascopo's ex-boyfriend, Andre Rebello, who is in prison for allegedly murdering his mum. Yeah, that's what he's in prison for. I haven't heard any updates in a few months now. I mean, the trial's not until the end of this year. It doesn't start until the end of this year. So I guess that's when we will start to hear a lot more about it. Can you see who viewed the live after you finished? You always get blue ticks popping in. No, I can't see who viewed the live. I also can't like access the comments again after it's finished. So yeah, don't know who's tuning in, which is kind of funny. I only know if people comment. Hannah's new bikini business. Is that Hannah Orville? I remember she had a clothing business at one point. So I wonder if it's the same business, but she's just doing bikinis now. I haven't seen anything about that, so I'll have to have a look. Do journalists spill gossiping to you as well to protect their identity? Uh, I don't think so. Sometimes like So Dramatic and I will like tell each other different things. So like if something's reality related, I might message it to her and be like, oh, you might want to cover this. Like if people message me like, oh, Love Island thing that I don't, want to post on my page because I am not really interested in them as influencers. I will like give it to her and she might post about it and like vice versa. She'll do the same as well, but no, nothing to like protect identities. All right. Someone said DJ Tiger Lily. So I'm not sure what the, oh, she must've popped into the live. I'd say it's just because when I go live, it's like the first thing that pops up on stories. Like it would have, that would come up at the very front. So that would probably be why they tune in and then they probably just hop out pretty quickly. <laughs> All right, well, thank you everybody for tuning into my live tonight. I'm sorry about the iPad technical difficulties at the start because that was just annoying me. So it must've been so annoying for all of you as well. But thank you and I will talk to you all soon.